Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, president of Digital Anarchy, and this is the advanced Flickr free tutorial. Uh, we're going to be using Final Cut Pro, but this applies equally well to After Effects or Premiere Pro or Avid or any of the other host applications that we support. And this tutorial is about where Flickr free doesn't work perfectly. All of our other tutorials kind of have footage that works pretty well with it without any real significant problems. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to look at some problem areas and figure out how to fix them or at least let you know of what the trade-offs you're going to have to make to get a good looking video. So let's start off. Uh, I'm going to turn off Flickr Free on this clip and then play it back so you can see what's going on. This is a Coca-Cola mini fridge thing. And you can see that we've got a lot of awful Flickr going on. A prime candidate for Flickr free. And so the first thing we're going to do is apply Flickr free with its kind of default settings. Uh, sensitivity is set to 10, time radius is 6, all channels is on, threshold is set to 10. And we'll come back to this in a little bit, but kind of the usable settings here are between 5 and 20. Um, threshold really works well on slow motion stuff. It's not so much a factor with time lapse. And actually the two problems that we're going to be looking at today are all slow motion. There's not usually a lot of problems with time lapse and flicker free. Most of the artifacts that come up, come up with the slow motion footage. So that's what we're going to be focusing on uh, today. And then we have detect motion uh, off, which you'll see is good and bad. So now with flicker free on, kind of at default settings, let's play it back. And you can see that most of that flicker is pretty much gone. Play it back one more time. And if you're following along at home with this footage, uh, which is downloadable from the Digital Anarchy website, since we're recording this and playing it back you know, on YouTube or Vimeo, you may or may not be able to see the flicker that well. But uh, these clips are downloadable from the digitalanarchy.com website. And so you can play along at home if you would like. But if you apply Flickr free, the demo version or the release version to this footage and set up these settings, you can see that the footage is pretty nice. We've gotten rid of most of the Flickr. There's still a little tiny bit of some flickering noise, but it's not too noticeable. Certainly much, much better than the original footage. However, let's take a look at the opening door. Because everything looks all nice and fine, right? Everything looks great. But the one thing that you're going to notice if you look closely at the door is that there are some artifacts here. You're seeing these white stripes uh, along the door. And if we turn off Flickr Free, you'll notice those are not there. They shouldn't be there. What's happening is because Flickr Free is looking at multiple frames and trying to kind of get them all together, it sometimes picks up artifacts. And if we were to set the time radius to 10, and at this point we're looking at 21 different frames to calculate, you'll see that those artifacts actually get worse and you can actually see the outline of the interior of the fridge in there. So by setting time radius to six, it looks at less frames and those artifacts are less pronounced. Now this is kind of a good trade-off. You can keep moving time radius to a lower value and get less artifacts, but then the flicker removal isn't as good because it's looking at less frames. So six is, in this case, a pretty nice compromise between what you're seeing here with the artifacts and significantly getting rid of that flicker. And this is the thing with Flickr Free. There are ways to make, you know, if you have any artifacts that come up and you want a little bit cleaner image, there are ways to do that. You can, you know, set time radius to a lower value. You can also turn on detect motion, which we'll do in just a second. But usually it's a trade-off between those artifacts showing up and the amount of Flickr that you're going to have. So in this case, with these settings, the Flickr looks really good. I'm pretty happy with those results. I'm just unhappy about the door. 
Now you can also set some keyframes here. That's one option, you know, keyframe it for the few frames that the door is opening so that there's less flicker removal, but because the door is opening, you don't really see the, the areas that are flickering as much. And so that's one option. Now we can turn on detect motion. You'll see that this also gets rid of the artifacts, but the problem as mentioned is that it's still flickering. The flicker removal is no, nowhere near as good as it was with detect motion off. So in this case, we really don't want to have detect motion on. And I think that in my opinion, the artifacts are not so bad or so noticeable that you have to get rid of them. You know, the door only opens over a few frames. The artifacts are very light. They actually almost look like light reflections. So you can actually get away with these artifacts in this case in order to get that really nice flicker removal. And so the same goes for threshold. We can play around with threshold to see what that does. If we set threshold to five, that's another way of getting rid of these artifacts. But as with detect motion, if we play this back, we get the flickering coming back. It's not quite as bad as with detect motion on. Um, so if you really had to get rid of those artifacts, Saying threshold to five would be a pretty good alternative. You still significantly reduce the flicker, but now you don't really have any artifacts. So it's really playing around with the settings and trying to find a compromise that works with the image and is acceptable to you or your client. All right, let's take a look at another example. In this example, we've got an anarchy blaster shooting out smoke rings. And we'll turn flicker free off just to give you an idea of what this is. So really nice slow motion smoke happening. Now this is very different than the Coke footage. Uh, the Coke footage was shot at 240 frames a second and you had some fluorescent lights that were flickering very badly. Uh, in this case, we've got footage that's been shot at 1255 frames a second and the lights are not flickering anywhere near as badly as they were in the last footage. But if you look up at the top here especially, you can see our footage flickering. The first thing we're going to do is apply flicker free with the default settings. Sensitivity of 10, time radius of 6, threshold 10, detect motion off, and we're going to play that back. And this definitely improves the footage. There's not as much flicker, but you can still see a little bit up there. And we'll deal with that in a second. But one problem that we do see is if we look at the smoke ring over here and we turn flicker free off, you'll notice that it's gotten much softer. Flicker free, of course, is trying to blend multiple frames together. And if you have something that's fairly fast moving, at least in terms of slow motion, footage. Sometimes when it attempts to remove the flicker, it does soften the image a little bit. And so one of the ways to fix that is turn detect motion on. This will do an analysis of the footage and give us a much better result. So we can turn this off again. And you'll see the fidelity between the original and the flicker free version is much better. There's really not much in difference at all. And we still have just as much removal of the flicker as we did before. But there's still a little bit of flicker going on and so the way to get rid of that is to crank the time radius up. And we'll set this up to 10. And now when we play it back, the flicker is gone. So it's done a really nice job of removing the flicker, keeping the fidelity of the original image together, and giving us a very nice result. Now the reason for increasing the time radius is this is an especially important thing to do with footage that's shot at a really high frame rate. You know, as I mentioned, this is shot at 1255 frames a second. And what that means is that the light flicker happens over a greater number of frames. Whereas with the Coke flickering, you know, that, was, that flicker was probably happening over just, you know, two or three frames. With this flicker, the up and down of the 
intensity of the light is happening over anywhere from you know four to eight frames. And so for flicker free to deal with that, it needs to have a larger time radius. With the time radius set to 10, flicker free is actually looking at 21 frames. 10 before, 10 after, and then the original image, or the frame that it's the playhead is on. So it's doing a lot of calculations to uh, help out with that flicker. But if you do have something that's relatively fast moving, especially if it's on sort of a field of color, as we have here, where it's just the object itself, the smoke ring against the black background, uh, sometimes you will see artifacts. You know, if we turn this off again, Let's uh, scoot forward to that one frame where it really shows up. Turn off detect motion. And not only does it get softer, but there's a little bit of a halo around the edge. And you might not be able to see this on this tutorial, but like I mentioned, all this footage is downloadable from the Digital Anarchy website. You can download it, use the Flickr free demo version to play around with it yourself and see these results. But once I click detect motion, the halo, and the softness just disappear. And because we have a time race set to 10, we don't have any flicker either. So it's done a great job on both these footage, even though they're a little bit problematic. Uh, you can definitely solve these issues with flicker free. There's lots of parameters in here to allow you to do that. And so that's pretty much it for this tutorial, dealing with flicker free problematic footage. And hopefully you found it useful. If you'd like to download the footage or a demo version of Flickr Free, just go to digitalanarchy.com and look for the Flickr Free section. Download lots of cool stuff there, other tutorials, other demo footage, and of course the free trial plugin. So thanks for joining me and see you in the next tutorial.